What it is, y'all? It's your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back today with more Damachi. Now, today, we've got to talk about uh, Telskira Abyss. This is a big change, a huge change to the Undertale Skira system, and what I think a lot of people aren't going to catch at first. So, let's go ahead and first take a look at this. Now, if you remember Undertale Skira was just like, basically war game advanced. You know, like, you could build several different teams, you could, you could modify those teams, you could choose who you're going to take on, so on and so forth. It was a very easy system, and I think me, as well as a lot of other people, just kind of hit a point where it's like, eh, do I really want to do this? Sure, I'll do enough to get my uh, my free uh, uh, free four stars, and then just walk away. And I th th so the revamp was needed, and I think this revamp is phenomenal. This brings back a level of difficulty and challenge. Um, this is a huge revamp to the system that is going to, th I think, please a lot of people, but it's also going to frustrate people. Okay, especially people that don't. I guess don't know how to build teams, but I'll show you today, there's a way in place to make this super duper simple. And a couple pitfalls you need to be aware of right out of the gate. So, to skip to uh, Telskira Abyss has three different types of scores. Base score, unit score, and technical score. Alright? So, uh, remaining remaining HP, some additional uh, some added based on the amount of remaining HP to the higher amount of the HP, the higher the score. So, uh, for, that's part of your base score. So, the more units you have surviving, the better your base score is going to be. Some added to the base on the amount of uh, turns taken, so the fewer turns, the higher the score. Uh, the total minimum damage for one skill. So, some, uh, so score added to the base on the highest damage dealt to every enemy unit's up to four by a single skill during the battle. So in other words, the higher the damage, the better your score. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You know what? Survive with a ton of HP, get a lot of get a lot of wins, and uh, in the fewest number of turns, and do a ton of damage. Get a really stellar score. Now, don't get too thirsty, because what's going to happen here is you're going to run in like I did on the first one, and I'll show you the big mistake that I made because I completely forgot how this worked. And, uh, yeah, you'll run into some problems. So, secondary. Score added based on the amount of times ailments were inflicted on the enemies. So, you can actually get more points if you have ailment units on your team. Okay? Guard frequency. Score added the amount of times that allies used guards. So, if you have a lot of allies with guard, that's really good. You can also notice this here. And the other thing I just have to realize, ailment frequency. If you have anti-ailment on your team you actually can do some damage to your opponent's score. Counter frequency, buff counters, higher score. Penetration and critical frequency, increase your penetration and critical rate for that matter, your dex score, and you'll increase your score. Special arts, if you can increase your, your SAGH charge, more score. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, unit bonuses, character-specific bonuses, score added to the amount uh, based on the amount of adventures, with that season's elemental bonus in the party. So, you can actually increase your score based on the elemental bonus. Bonus killer. So, score it at the amount of adventures that use the uh, season's killer score. So, we'll need to look at all that for this one. And first time participant. Score added at the base based on how many adventures are being used for, uh, for the first time in a match. Score based on the amount of how many assists are being used and memoria being used. So, Based on your adventures, your assists, and your memoria, you're going to get a score. I've seen a lot of teams that already aren't using memoria, and that is a problem. Technical bonus. Now, this is where it gets fun. Four or less adventurers defeated. A fixed amount of score is added if four or less adventurers were defeated when you won the battle. In other words, if you don't lose anybody, great. Uh, so, four, three, two, one. No adventurers defeated. The uh, amount of score added if no adventures were defeated when you won the battle. So if you can, like, brute force this and win with nobody taken off your field, you're going to absolutely crush your score. Defeated enemies at once, defeated enemies, blah, 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 blah. So the more enemies you defeat, the higher your score is going to be as well. Really easy stuff. No need to breed all that. Four of the same adventures. So you can build a team of all the same adventures 
all bells, all eyes, things like that, and get a score bonus. Male adventures, female adventures, uh, four units of the same familia, you get a familia bonus. Um, I would imagine, if, let's say you like make out all eyes uh, team, you're going to get a bonus for both having all of eyes, all female, and all all of the Loki Familia. So there's a lot to really think about when you're planning teams out. So the first thing you want to do when you come in here, notice there's physical ma attack, magic attack, elemental attack, uh, killer skill. You know, there's a if you're going to be competitive in this, there's a ton to consider when you're building your teams. So if you're going competitive, you're going to want to make sure that you've got some stellar teams set aside. So notice here it says uh, equipments. At level, um, all my equipments are going to be at level 90. There's no question about that. Score added based on the amount of adventures equipped at level 90. Uh, weapon in your party. The more adventures equipped, the higher the score. So you want to make sure that all your weapons and all your equips are actually fully leveled up. That's a change for me because I've been really lazy sometimes about equips. So this becomes a huge change. This means some of those equips that I've been really lazy on that I was like just say to that level 60... Go upgrade some equips. Make sure your equips are good to go. Like I said, there's a ton to really consider here. So, a single round's bonus score is uh, the total of the above criteria multiplied by the rank bonus. So, right now I'm in Braver. Probably should be higher than that, but I'm not. Uh, that means my bonus is times one. If you get up to Hero, it's 5.8. Probably most people are going to, like lie in the jester and king rank i'm guessing i think hero rank is going to be extremely competitive extremely hard and you're going to be fighting people that are you know like that are just really 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 solid at team building so here's the deal score after losing should you lose a uh, a battle only there's a hair on my screen uh should you lose a battle uh with a score will only be the total of the base score plus the primary score plus the total maximum score and base score less than secondary. So, you know, what it is what it is. Um, also, the rank bonus will always be t one times, no matter what classes you've challenged. So, losing is a huge, huge punishment. Uh, so, these are things you want to take into account. So, let's go in here and let's take a look. So, Telskir Abyss, uh, my current score is 3,900. I've done one fight. This will be around for about two weeks' time. You really do want to run this every day. You get five tickets, and each ticket opens up five attempts at the event. So, don't waste those opportunities. Do not waste those opportunities. These are going to be precious. Uh, so, let's go ahead and look here. So, so rewards. So, today's reward is uh, do Telskir Abyss three times. Uh, get wins as braver, jester and king. You're gonna get some rewards. So once again, you want to run this every day, even though I didn't run the last two days because lazy. Uh, that's on me. I'm missing some rewards. Here's your rankings. Once you get those rankings, you're good to go. Get total scores. You get some really sweet rewards. Uh, there's five iris in there. There's some hero fauna. I'm seeing uh, three star tickets. I'm seeing books, which I desperately need. Uh, ooh, there's a hero light. Three million points is a hero light. Okay, that's that suddenly became super worthwhile. And remember, this is going to refresh every two weeks, so you really, really, really can't miss a day, which sucks for me that I did. Uh, so, what are other things you kind of need to know here? And, and this is going to be really interesting overall so number one let's actually go to the news it should tell us in the news some of the favorite items for this particular telskira abyss now it did say that there's going to be a, a killer uh bonus it did say that there's going to be a um let's see here so uh telskira abyss is ranked blah, blah 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 parties up to five times an earn you can get iris and titles blah 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 so you can earn score bonuses by using specific elements and killer skills once you use the blah, 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 blah. Does it tell us how do you uh, basic rules about rewards and titles? Should tell us what the killer skill is, and I don't see it. Uh, ranking rewards, these are all like first-time things. Maybe in the event it tells us the killer skill. I don't see it. It's not 
expressly stated here, at least that I'm aware of. Um, there's obviously, like I said, unit popularity things and all that. Okay, so it actually tells us down here at the bottom. <laughs> Should have been paying attention. So, elemental bonuses for fire element and for wind element and for material and worm killers. So, here's the deal. And this is the early mistake I made. Notice this team is a fire team. A uh, lot of good people on that team. Um, I think there's some material killers there, too. Here's the deal, guys. If I'm going to go ahead and fight this team, I can then just go in here and I can auto-set, let's just say for the sake of argument, a water team. And we'll do... I'll, I'll take off my stun resistance and we'll just build a water team out, right? <laughs> Sorry. Build a water team out, right? Bam. Okay, so we got a water team. We got a water magic team. Now, we're not going to get any bonuses on this team or anything like that, but notice there's already a problem. It will not let me use that Aphrodite unit. Aphrodite is absolutely out of the question. So I've got to find someone else to run here, and I'm thinking I might actually... Uh, yeah, we'll run her. Why not? I don't think it's going to be super important. I don't think she's going to make a huge difference, but it is worth noting... With the exception of Wealth, I'm running all female units. So let's get rid of Wealth, and let's look up a female water unit. And we can run... Let's run her. I don't think she's going to be super important. In fact, I will put her on the backside here. And if you kind of notice, what I'm doing here is I'm choosing units at this lower level that I can kind of throw away, for lack of a better way to put it. And uh, this will be an all-female... Uh, I think she's actually physical, isn't she? Yeah, she's physical. No, she's magic. Uh, is she physical or magic? I don't remember. She's magic. So this would be an all... Let's see, we can actually take her off. No, she's magic too. And then she's definitely magic. Yeah, don't imagine one of her being... Uh, let's see. She is magic. So it's an all-female magic water team. So this is going to get a pretty decent bonus. Now, it's not going to get an elemental bonus, but it'll get some other really nice bonuses. Let's move Hermes off, and I'm just going to grab... Uh, let's see. Hermes does... Hermes is going to do magic resistance. Uh, so let's grab... I don't want to grab somebody that I'm going to use in another match. Uh, Asfi. Single target plus 20%. You know, that'll actually help counters. So I'm just going to utilize that, even though it's probably not the best. I think that'll actually be fine. So what we can do is we can set this here. And then, let's see, it's telling me I still can't battle. So, well, why can't we battle? What are we lacking to battle? That becomes the question here. Oh, probably because I have Memoria set. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and remove my Memoria. Now, this is probably going to be one of the biggest game changers uh on this you utilizing well i'm just gonna go and throw just random memoria on here uh critical rate counter raid i have a bunch of un un upgrade uh upgraded memoria but here's the deal guys okay oh we're gonna go in battle well, i'll show you after the battle all right so it's all water team. I should have, uh, or mostly water team. I should have a pretty good bonus here. Um, now, the team that I'm up against is going to be kind of rugged, but so long as we don't take an insane amount of We got a healer on there, so that's good news. As long as we don't take an insane amount of damage. Oof, they are nullifying a lot of the incoming magic. Okay, here we go. All right, so we got it. We're good to go now. Little was a little worried, uh, but the main thing here was to go in there with uh, fire resistance and kind of do their thing. Um, here's the reason that I kind of built that team. And I know this team was kind of built on the fly. Didn't really have a lot of thought to it. It's definitely not a team I'm going to save. But when I go into the next round, okay? So notice they only have four units set. So I need to be a little cautious about this. The reason they have no four units set and they don't have any memorials is because when I go into battle, I cannot use anyone on that team again. Okay? And I can't use my main, current main, war game team that hasn't been hugely vetted yet. I can't use any of these units yet either. I have to wait a few more turns before I can go in there and do that. Same with the Memoria. If I go in here and I set Memoria, the current Memorias that I used get reset in two. These old Memorias get reset in one. You've got to be pretty uh, cautious about what Memoria you're using, what teams you're using, and all that good stuff. Because teams 
will time out pretty quickly. Now, I think setting no Memoria is a huge mistake. I think setting four units is a huge mistake. So, uh, but this team does look kind of scary. So what I need to do is I need to go in here with a team that's going to have a good amount of water resistance because that's exactly what they're doing. Um, and I need a team that's going to be pretty hardy. So what you're going to have to do here, basically my recommendation is when you go in to build a team, probably build, because there's you can build a total of seven teams, right? So you don't want to do like we did with the old Telskira where you make three or four uh, war game teams and you just recycle them. Bad, bad idea. Not, not a smart maneuver. What you probably want to do is you probably want to have four or five uh, elemental teams that you know you can rely on that are going to be really good. And then each month, maybe like build a team for uh, what are this, the, the killer skills or for one of the elemental skills and then probably have like a really good ailment team and maybe, maybe even want to run an ailment unit for that ailment bonus on each and every team you build. So you're going to need to go in here. You're going to need to build seven teams. And that is just the reality of this. Now, for the first under Telskira, this is, or Telskira Abyss, this is going to be a pretty interesting. But you can still use the auto setup system to basically make the base of your team and then go in and tweak and configure it. So my recommendation, have at least one, if not two ailment units on there. Um... Definitely want some healers because you don't want to lose health. You definitely want to keep health on there. So I'm pretty sure like a good team would be like, so we have a Haruhime of every element. That kind of becomes a no-brainer pretty quick. In fact, in my water team, she's water magic. I could have run that original uh, winter. Uh, uh, I think she was, she water or she light? She was light. I take that back. I think she was light. Uh, but anyway, I could have run um, the water Haruhime. I could have run all these different types of units that would have really helped out. So consider your strongest teams and i would say every single element probably not up for grabs because there are some elements that have just simply not gotten the amount of love I'm looking at you earth and thunder i think those they've got good units but i think overall full team synergy don't think they have it so go build a great earth team or i'm sorry go go build a great uh wind team go build a great fire team Keep in mind your killer skills and what teams you have with those killer skills. Maybe build an earth team and a fire team and then maybe build a uh, killer skill for each material and worm killer skill. Uh, maybe take a really solid war game ailment team that you would do and things like that. If you guys want to see certain specific teams uh, covered for each one of these Telskira Abysses, absolutely let me know in the comments. I think I, I could definitely uh, muster up a few teams to make that, that work. If you think that'd be helpful, let me know. But other than that, Happy hunting, good luck. I think we're going to come back and touch on this before it goes away. We've got a little less than two weeks to make that happen. And uh, I got a little bit to learn myself still. So, lots to take in. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys liking Telskira Abyss? I personally think this is going to be a lot of fun. Because me as somebody who likes to be challenged, I think it's going to challenge me to become a better team builder. But that's maybe just me. Like, comment, share. I'm going to catch you guys coming up here really soon for more Damachi.